Um, Michael Glanville from Portland, Oregon, sent us three really good questions on monarchy. Okay. You're a monarchist, right? Yeah, so they tell me. Okay. Uh, a real, life, a real <laughs> life nephew of my Uncle Sam, born on the 4th of July. That's me. Okay, first question. What would a Catholic nation or kingdom be like as opposed to America, ideally speaking? Well, there's a whole, a whole episode in itself. <laughs> well, ideally speaking, the purpose of the state in Catholic teaching is, number one, to provide for the welfare of its subjects so that they can have the leisure to worry about their souls and to assist the church in its uh, salvific mission. So the church would have charge of things like education and health care and social welfare and all that kind of stuff. Um, and there would be no public expressions, no public attacks on church teaching. So that is kind of the lowest common denominator of Catholic states. Um, very often the, uh, in such a setup, the state might pay the, uh, might pay the um, uh, salaries of the clerics. Uh, bearing in mind, of course, the clerics are doing an awful lot more in terms of state things than they do now. Um, so that's, that's pretty much it. The whole, the whole point of the state would be different to what it is now. How well it would fulfill that, of course, is a whole other issue. But we're talking ideally. Okay. His second question. <clears throat> you have said that the modern American president, since at least FDR, has wielded more power than any monarch that you ever heard of. True. Can you elaborate on this? It does seem pretty self, uh, self-explanatory. I mean, you look at some of the worst despots of the past. Look at Henry VIII. All right. Henry VIII uh, could only get married one at a time, and he had to go through some form of annulment under divorce. Um, he couldn't change the nature of marriage. Our masters can. Uh, the ability to go to war, to commit the uh, to commit the country's resources to war, without any any consultation with anyone else, um, not even Louis XIV could do that. And he was a pretty big war wager. Um, the level of the level of information control and all that sort of thing that we have today was something that simply didn't exist. So it probably would not be fair necessarily to uh, make that as part of the part of the comparison. Mm -hmm. But all in all, we accept a lot more intrusion in our lives on the part of the government uh, than would have been acceptable in one of the old monarchies. In fact, one of the, um, and mind you, I'm not a big fan of Chinese monarchy, but nevertheless there's an interesting poem from the Ming Times, I think, that I'll misquote for you, but it gets across the point. Uh, and bear in mind, this was not a Christian monarchy where uh, it was believed the king had, had to act as father of his people and somehow look at both their spiritual and physical welfare. Yeah. But the poem goes something like this. I, uh, I plow my fields, I tend my animals, I love my wife, I raise my children. What has the emperor's power to do with me? And that, I don't think anyone could say about the president of the United States. You know, I, I've gotten, I've talked to people about this um, and sort of made that uh, a similar point. And they'll say that the presidents have earned the right to be more invasive because we're now in a better state of living than perhaps in medieval times. What? That would be true if the presidents of the United States were responsible for those advances. President Thomas, uh, Thomas Alva Edison. Oh no, he wasn't a president. Promised uh, President Jacob Lister. <laughs> Hmm. No, no, not him. I can't think of a single president who has done anything for the welfare of the people of that sort. That has got to be one of the most asinine arguments I've ever heard. I'm all for it, though. I love asinine arguments. <laughs> I favor them. It's my right. I'm an American. You know what? 
What was I thinking? We have, you heard it here first, ladies and gentlemen. The presidents of these United States have earned their power over you by the way your lives have improved since the Middle Ages. Sold. That's pretty stupid. Yeah. Okay, well, my breath's taken away. <laughs> All right, let's go on to the next one. <clears throat> okay, last question. What would taxes be like under a Catholic monarchy as opposed to what we have in America today? Oh, gee, who can say? Well, a lot would depend upon the size of the state apparatus, obviously. Um, you know, when you've got a, a huge machinery, as we do, you've got, to, you've got to feed the animal, don't you? But because in those days, in those times, the state apparatus wasn't nearly as big as it is, then obviously the taxes would be smaller. Uh, it, what would be taxed is a whole other issue. Um, they could be very, very creative when it came to taxes in Britain. And they weren't in France, which is why when the French would fight these world wars with the British, you know, the, over here we called uh, uh, King William's War and Queen Anne's War and King George's War and the French Indian War. They had other names for the rest of the world. Uh, the French might, I generally, not fight the British, but they always ran out of money because their system was not able to pull as much dough out of the populace as the British system could. And that was a result of the way they had been retooled after the Reformation. So, and, I, and obviously, in terms of, of victory and defeat, that went to the British, uh, to the British interest. But anyway, um, I suppose they'd be less, but you know, here you're getting into an area that is very, very difficult to judge. So, I'll just say that I cannot believe that a Catholic monarchy would be at the apex of a state this big. Okay, so. And a state this big requires the kind of money it gouges out of us. So a monarchy wouldn't, doesn't inherently lend itself to a small state or a big state no, per se. Not per se. Um, it... It all depends on a lot of things. I mean, for instance, if uh, the monarchy in question were an island with few enemies, obviously they wouldn't require a, uh, a large defense establishment. <laughs> if they were Poland, they'd have to be harmed to the teeth if they wanted to survive. So I <laughs> it, it gets difficult to answer that question. I see. Okay, that's it for this episode. If you enjoyed listening to Charles, please subscribe to our Tumblr House YouTube channel. If you'd like to ask him a question, you can talk, contact us through our website, tumblrhouse.com. Thank you for watching. And please, 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 if you have stupid questions that I can make fun of, send those in. Not challenging, like this last question. Don't send me challenging questions. Show me, send me questions that... Oh, no, no, he's right. Send to the good questions. <laughs> that's what I meant. Ha, ha, ha.